Hi, I'm MJ Calloway here in the tiny bounce up studio with our next contributor and guest. So the contributor from the project, the book project 21. And today's guest is Gloria Ward. So welcome, Gloria. Hey, MJ. How are you? I'm so excited to be here. I am. I can't wait to talk to you. And Gloria is coming to us from Atlanta. So happy to be with you today. Now, Gloria, could you share with our viewers a little bit about yourself, please? Oh, yes. Yeah. So uh, I have been an entrepreneur for over 17 years, and I have my wonderful project, which is the I'm Loving Me Project, where we inspire women to love themselves and also live their highest and truest self. We also inspire them to understand and know that anything that they want to do in their life is possible. Um, I'm coming from a background where I was taught that, uh, but I also went through trials and tribulations to actually get there. But once I figured out what it really takes to uh, succeed and take your, and take my life to the next level, I was able to really, really, really hone in on um, the idea of being able to understand what it takes to really love yourself and really honor that. So I suffered from divorce, from all the things that you can think of, but there's always an opportunity to bounce back. And that's exactly what I did. And now I help other women do the same. Which is awesome. So with that, I'm just going to take a little bit of a detour. Uh -huh. Do you find that women, and probably men do this too, they give so much of themselves to others, and they're not always great at giving back to themselves. Absolutely. That's that's one of the biggest things that we go through, MJ, because that's what we were taught, right? In our right. society, we're taught that you are not the head of the household, but you are the head of the family. You are supposed to give, your, give yourself to your kids, uh, make sure that you are there for your husband, do all of these things and put yourself last, right? Right. And, but the philosophy that I have is how can you be good or be the best for someone when you're not the best for yourself? So right? true. So you cannot true. Give somebody's, you cannot give a person something you don't have. And while you're giving and giving and giving and you're not replenishing, what you're doing is you're burning out. Right? You're burning right. out. But when you decide to go ahead and choose you, you can be the best for everyone else. You can be the best. When you decide to pour into yourself and to grow and to understand who you are and to love yourself, what does that mean for your kids? How much love do you think you can pour into your kids? How much, how much motivation and love can you pour into your husband? So he can start that business. So he can be the best husband that he can be. That only happens if you choose you and you decide to love yourself first, right? Right. So you're talking about filling the cup first Absolutely. before you fill somebody else's cup. Correct. Because you can't give somebody something you don't have. Yes. And you do it through... I'm Loving Me. Did I get that right? I'm Loving yes. Me Project. Yes, the I'm Loving Me Project. Most of the women that come to us uh, have been through divorce or they widowed or, you know, they, they've been through traumatic experiences in their life. So they're trying to figure out who they are and what they want to do with their life. They have this aching, nagging thing that keeps bothering them each and every day that tells them that they should be doing more, that they, that they, uh, know that they can have a life that they want to live, but at the same time, they don't know how, right? Because they never took the time to figure out and look at the person in the mirror to say, who am I? What do I like? Right? I had a right. woman one time and she came uh, into our group and she was talking and she just started crying and crying. And she said, I don't know what I want to do. Right. And we were like, well, well, how is life right now? And she said, my kids are gone. I'm in the house by myself. I, I don't have a job anymore. I, I was supposed to be a mom. 
You know, I was a mom, they're grown. I don't even know what I like because everything was about them. She lost her identity. Her identity was within her children. She lost it. Absolutely. Absolutely. Wow. And what we teach is you have to learn how to have that balance where you choose yourself, figure out what you like, what you love, what hobbies you want. If you want to start a business, all those things, because that will allow you to fulfill your purpose because everybody has a purpose and you get to figure that out and you don't have to do it after the kids are gone, when you're in a worry state trying to figure out, <laughs> you know, <laughs> and how you're going to go on day to day. You can do that now and you can pull your kids into it if you want to. You can actually live the life that you want to live right now if you choose to. So today over someday. Correct. Let's choose today, not someday. That's exactly right, MJ. I love that. So one of the we're so we're talking about 2020 and yeah. 2020, you know. A lot of businesses had issues and struggles. You started off a little bit behind the, let's say, the eight ball because you had to cancel your biggest program. Wow. Could, yes. But How did you manage? I, you know, we were in denial. <laughs> we were in denial for a little bit because we just didn't think that uh, COVID was going to do what it did because we thought, okay, a couple of cases are here, right? <laughs> right. Oh, it's going to go away. It's going to be like Ebola and all that stuff, right? So we're not going to worry about it. And what we were doing is we were having this big event. It was kind of like our coming out party where we were going to have all these coaches and we was going to be in Pennsylvania. We had a hotel to showcase, uh, uh, our coaches that's going to help our women recruit people into our membership, everything. It was a big event that we were promoting. And uh, we kept watching the news. <laughs> we kept watching the news because we were looking for the weather, right? <laughs> we, weren't, we weren't worried about the, the coronavirus or anything like that. And so when they said the first case of coronavirus hit New York, and we were like, oh, okay, everything hits New York, right? Right. Everything, everything hits Florida. Everything hits New York, the big cities. And then all of a sudden, people started dying. And we were like, okay, Ebola was the yeah. same way. They're going to catch it. Then it started to get closer and closer to home, MJ. Like, my family had to go in quarantine Everything on the news was like, you know, we got to go in lockdown. And we were like, oh, my God, do we really need to cancel the event? And we held on as long as we could. We had ho we had the hotel book. We had flights book. We had rent-a-cars reserve. We had everything you can think of. Facilities rented out, food, catering, photography, everything. And... Uh, my publicist and event manager was like, hey, I, I don't think this is going to happen. They're talking about, you know, a, a, a nationwide lockdown. And I said, come on, we could, you know, we can do this. It's going to work. We'll probably get there when it gets bad, but then we can have our event and then it's done. And then a lockdown happened right during that time in March. So our event was March the 20. 20th, I believe, or the 21st. And it was like a few days before they was like, nope, we're going on lockdown. Oh, lockdown. done. So plane tickets, all of that stuff. Well, I mean, we got some of our money back from like the hotel, mm -hmm. you know, uh, uh, the rent-a-car people, but flights and photography, all of those non-refundable things. Right. It just went down the drain and we were horrified because we got so, we put months of work into it. Sure. And it, and, and, and it was bad. It was bad. <laughs> and it's on top of losing the money and you did get some credits, 
got right. some money back, but it's never what you've put out. No, and and also think about it, the mission we were trying to accomplish. At that right. time, we're only a three-year-old company. So we put our best efforts to really get our marketing out there. So we have flyers and banners and all the stuff that we couldn't get back. And uh, if you are uh, a company that is bootstrapping, every dollar counts. Sure does. Right? right? Every dollar counts. And when you are not able to uh, have these events where you can recoup your cost, you're looking at your you looking at your money every day in your house or in your storage place of stuff you never use with an old date on it that you can't do nothing about. No. Right? It's right. devastating. But what can you do? Right. You did do something. Even yeah. though you were in, you were behind, even though know, the event didn't happen, you know, it is something no one wants to have to deal with. Right. You knew you had a need. There was a need out there. Yes. We started, um, once we started really getting serious about the coronavirus, we started watching the news. And one of the things that stuck out to me was a lady who said, hey, I don't, uh, I don't have the option to go to my treatments anymore and I'm in recovery. Everything is shut down. So now I'm in my house and I need to be able to, you know, go to treatment. I don't know what I'm going to do. I don't want to turn around and go use, but I'm alone and I'm by myself. My treatment helps me. And so then I, I just got on uh, uh, social media. I got on Facebook, actually. And I said, you know, is everybody doing okay? You know, is everybody all right being at home? This is before Zoom became popular, everything. Because everything was up in the air. We didn't know what we were going to do, right? Right. And we got all these comments saying, no, we're not okay. You know, some people were saying that they were okay, but the majority of the people was like, I don't know what's going to happen with my job or anything. So I got my team together and I said, well, what is it that we can do? How can we actually support our women? Our, our, our event is not going to happen, right? So what else can we do? And we came up with the idea of putting together this hotline. And this hotline was for them to have a place where they can come and that they can talk about whatever it is that they wanted to talk about. They could talk to me, they can talk to one of our coaches, just so that that um, just so that we knew that they were okay. And MJ, what we found was that most of the women were at home with their abusers. They going to work was their outlet, right? Right. But they were right. stuck at home with them. Um, some of them had the kids at home to go to school and they didn't have the, the right technology to do homeschool. And at that point, the kids weren't going to school at all because they were just trying to figure out how to make this all happen. Because remember, they thought that, oh, after the lockdown, we'll be okay. We can go back and we can open up. Well, right. here in Atlanta, our governor did just that. That was the thing. He opened up everything and got a lot of flack for it, right? Right. And right. Uh, But a lot of people were closed down. So we were getting calls. Oh, it was almost, I would say we were getting at least seven, eight calls an hour. Loneliness frustration, mm. um, depression, uh, people that just wanted to talk. But we did that. We said we had to put something out there for our group. And, and that was one of the best things we did. What would you say, and it's such commendable to do it because there really was a need. We heard it nationally. Right. You had taken, you know, the rope, you had taken 
and made that change occur. Mm -hmm. What would you say to somebody who needs to make a shift or who is behind? What would you say to them? Because you made it happen. Right. What could they do to make it happen? Look to see where you can solve problems. Um, I tell people right now, you're behind, right? Right. 2020 really didn't do much for you or your business. You probably lost a lot of money. You are probably trying to figure out how you can recoup all the money that you lost and still stay in business because we understand that it, it takes a lot to actually stay in business. One of the things that I want you to focus on is seeing where your product or service can solve at least one problem in someone's life who has been through something in 2020. Look at the frontline workers. What is it that you have that you can provide? Don't think that they don't take things. Those people, the frontline workers, were working through the entire pandemic. Yes, right. right. Think of their mental health. Think of the things that they would need. They, they are ready to relax, have time off, looking for peace, looking to uh, 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 just clear their mind a little bit. Anything that you can do. Right? right. You also have 154,000 women who had to leave their job in 2020. They yes. are unemployed. If you can help in any way to get them to feel good about themselves, teach them resume writing, help them out with a course, anything that will help them get to the next level in their growth and in their life, you will be able to have a great 2021 because what I say, MJ, 2021 is the reconstruction era, right? Love this that. Time, this is a time where you look at everything that has happened and you say, who can I help? Who needs what it is that I have? And then you provide those needs. I love that reconstruction. 2021 is reconstruction. Is. So would you say it is looking to see how you can offer value to others? Uh, extremely. Value is one of the things that's like my pet peeve. I tell people all the time, I tell my team this, value is the name of the game. You always want to be able to over deliver with everything that you do. If you are a business owner out there, if you are providing a service, even if you are in your professional career and you're working for someone and you are thinking about moving over to the area of entrepreneur, uh, entrepreneurship, mm -hmm. focus on value. Value will take you so far. You know why? Because People appreciate when you over deliver. People yes. appreciate when they get more for their money. And if it doesn't cost you anything, trust me, you will have a customer for life. I said, you know, it's like dropping seeds. Drop as many good seeds as you can and the harvest will come. You don't have to worry about where the money is going to come from if you're providing value and you're over delivering in that value. So what does that mean? If you are providing, let's say, uh, a book to people, inside of that book, does it include the next steps so that you can take them a little bit further to solve their problem? Did it include anything special that they did not think that they were going to get? Maybe a handwritten note, maybe the opportunity to have a one-on-one -on -one with you, maybe the opportunity to get something free from you within the next 20 to 30 days. Those things people look at and say, you know what? This person actually cares about solving my problem. This person is really not interested in my $17, but they're interested in helping me 
really get my life to the next level. And that's how you deliver value. And that's how you are able to keep a customer for life. Trust me, I believe in it. It works. That's why we were able to pivot. That's why we were able to uh, uh, be in this reconstruction period and actually mm -hmm. to grow our business. So it works. Such great advice and suggestions and giving others the steps to Great. take it to the next level. So awesome. As we're wrapping up here, Gloria, how can others reach out to you? What is the best way to connect or several ways to connect to you? Yeah, you can find um, you can find me and everything that I do at the I'm Loving Me Project. Everything is the I'm Loving Me Project on Facebook, on Instagram, on LinkedIn. You will find out everything that we have to offer all the things that we do, uh, all the interviews that we have, and all the value that we provide. So at uh, the I'm Loving Me Project, that's where you can find us. Love it. Thank you so much for your wisdom and also sharing your journey because you made it happen. Thank you for having me, MJ. I really did appreciate the conversation. It was a delight, absolute delight, because I took some tidbits from that myself. So yeah. absolutely delight. <laughs> All right, this wraps up our conversation for day. And remember, make it a bounce up day.